Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Smashing English. Before we start this video, be sure to subscribe because we make new videos all the time and I don't want you to miss any. So with that said, let's get on with the video. Hello, my name is Laura and I am an English teacher. I teach people online how to speak English. Nice. And a lot of my students are really, really interested in the English accent. Now, when I say the English accent, I mean standard English slash RP. This is usually the accent my students mean when they say, I would like to speak with an English accent. But remember, there is no such thing as an English accent. So obviously there are lots of different accents in England and I am only focusing on a couple today. I'm only looking at a couple of them. Um, so I apologize if I don't cover the region of England that you are specifically hoping to learn the accent of. <laughs> so I'm just going to look at some very famous examples examples of English accents featured in movies and TV done by people who don't normally speak with an English accent. And I will give you my thoughts on when it is perfect and when it is not perfect. Because a great way to improve an accent is to see when it's done badly, so you know not to make the same mistake. And yes, for this video I'm just focusing on England, but Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, I love you, but I am not Welsh, Scottish or Northern Irish so I don't feel like I can critique the accents. And last thing, as always, if you are learning English, you do not have to speak with an English accent. You don't. You just have to speak with a clear accent. That's it. Off we go. So I'm going to watch these videos on my phone. So I'm going to put these in. Hello. I don't have AirPods. I feel like I should get AirPods. This makes me feel like <laughs> A bit behind the times here. You don't really see wires anymore, do you? So we are going to start with the accent of Johnny Depp in Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay, so let's watch a scene together and we'll talk about the accent. Let's do it. This dock is off limits to civilians. I'm terribly sorry, I didn't know. If I see one, I shall inform you immediately. Okay, so I believe, I've always thought that this accent has more of a Birmingham influence than anything else. So it's kind of like London, Birmingham drunk, if that makes sense, if you mix those things together. And I'll tell you why I think it's got a Birmingham influence. So let me play that little line again. I'm terribly sorry I didn't know. If I see one... I'm terribly sorry I didn't know. I'm terribly sorry. It kind of goes sorry I didn't know. Now those sounds are really Birmingham. Sorry, no. Now I believe he was influenced by Ozzy Osbourne a bit for this accent. I think it was Keith, Richard, Keith Richards for the movement and then Ozzy Osbourne for the accent. So I think that's where the Birmingham's coming from because Ozzy Osbourne is from Birmingham. But then he does say, If I see one, I... If I see one, one, that open London Cockney, one. He doesn't go, if I see one because that would be quite Birmingham to say one, 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 one. So he's doing a mix, which I guess is fine. You know, you're a pirate. I don't know what accents were like back in those days, but every sound he's doing is something that I would hear in an English accent. Do you know what I mean? He's not doing anything in there that sounds American. So he's doing great. Apparently there's some sort of high toned and fancy to do up at the Fort, eh? At the Fort, eh? At the Fort, eh? Fort Hay but he kind of taps his tea a little bit and makes it really soft. Forte, shy, shy, very Birmingham. Forte, which is something that I've not heard Americans be able to replicate. So yeah, fair play. How could it be that two upstanding gentlemen such as yourselves did not merit an invitation? Did not merit. Now, that's the only little vowel sound that's not, that's not been perfect so far. So he's saying merit but he kind of goes married. And that's quite common. Americans tend to make every vowel sound sort of wide, because it's London, I'm Cockney. But sometimes we do have tighter vowel sounds like eh, merit, merit. So for that sound, I wouldn't go, did not merit. I would say, did not merit. You know, just keep it more eh. But other than that, He's sounding very good. But it seems to me that a, a ship like that makes this one here a bit superfluous, really. A ship like that, that, that. These 
ah sounds are one of the biggest things I hear with my English learners um, that they're almost scared of this sound when they want to do a RP British English accent because this ah sound I think a lot of learners assume that we don't have it in, in England. It's like, well, everything is ah, bath, grass, palm, half. But actually the ah is really common as well. That, that. I hear so often people going that or that. But it's actually right in the middle. Ah, it's the same as apple or cat or bat. So don't be afraid to make that really wide if you're going for a standard English RP London Accent. It's supposed to be very fast, nigh uncatchable. The black pearl. The black pearl, pearl, pearl. He's doing a typical Cockney L here. So, most accents in England, this would be a dark L, okay? If you don't know what a dark L is, it's when you push your tongue to the this part of your mouth, uh, 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 and you hold it there, ooh, 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 to go pearl. Pearl. But he doesn't do that. He does more of the Cockney version, which is like a W. Pearl. Pearl. So, depends. If you want to sound like a Cockney, do your dark L's like Pearl, like a W. If you want to have a more traditional, more RP sound, we want the dark L. Pearl. Well. Small. Little. But overall, an excellent accent. I think one of the best examples of a Birmingham, London mix accent in movies and TV. Now let's move on to another one of my favorite movies, Bridget Jones's Diary with Renee Zellweger, who is Southern, I think she's from like Texas or something, um, doing a RP accent, a very sort of London RP accent. And it's very, very famous because a lot of people in Britain thought that she was British. So it's a very good accent. So she's a good person to listen to. But before we look at Renee Zellweger, I have to tell you something. <laughs> Ow. I want to tell you about a way that you can perfect your English skills and earn up to 100% cash back. 100%. So like I said at the beginning of this video, I am an English teacher. Ta-da! I teach people every single day online. And I'm also a language learner. Je prends le français en ligne aussi. And that's why you should take my advice when I tell you that if you are trying to learn, improve, or perfect your English, you need to try Lingoda. Qu'est-ce que la Lingoda? I'm so glad you asked. Let me tell you. Lingoda is an online language school where you can take classes from qualified teachers 24 seven. That's right, whenever you want. Two in the morning, six in the morning, seven at night, right now. I use Lingoda to learn French and as you can see, je parle parfaitement français. Honestly, the best way to perfect your language skills is by having an actual lesson with a real person, one-to-one, -one, where you have to use that language. It just makes it so much speedier. And my favorite thing about Lingoda is they offer the Lingoda Sprint Challenge. They have the Super Sprint Challenge where you take 30 lessons per month for two months. And if you attend all the classes, you get 100% cash back. And there's also the Sprint Challenge where if you take 15 lessons per month for two months, you can get 50% cash back for attending all the lessons. Honestly, the improvement I saw in my French after doing the Sprint Challenge was incredible. I went from j'adore le cinéma, j'aime la bibliothèque, to bien sûr, j'ai beaucoup de passe-temps. Peut-être qu'après cette leçon, j'irai faire du patin à glace. If you're looking to reach new heights in your target language, then the Lingoda Sprint Challenge is exactly what you need to stay committed and motivated to your goal. Click the link down below for more information and use my code SMASHINGENGLISH to receive 20 euros or $25 off your Sprint registration. You're welcome. Thank you, Lingoda, and back to the video. Okay, like I said, we are looking at Renee Zellweger in Bridget Jones's diary. It all began on New Year's Day in my 32nd year of being single. Okay, let's look at her R. So she says, my 32nd year of being single. That R is a huge problem for a lot of English learners. I think a lot of Spanish speakers want to say my 32nd year of, year -a -ra -ra. Americans want to say my 32nd year of. In England, most of the accents, we have the same R. 
okay? So if we've got an R with a vowel sound after it, and as you can see, we do because we are going to link the two words, year of, we're going to link them together because there's a vowel and that's perfect for linking. So year of, we do say the R, we say the R, okay? If it's just the word year on its own, let's say year is the end of the sentence. Oh, I'll see you next year. We don't say the R, we go year, year, we let it go. But if there's a vowel after it, we do pronounce the R. So we say things like road or sorrow or rotten. We say those R's because there's a vowel after it. And she does a perfect R here. My 32nd year of. She doesn't go year of, she doesn't go year of. Year of, r, r, r. Once again, I found myself on my own and going to my mother's annual turkey curry buffet. Almost, oh, she was so close, they're so close. My mother's annual turkey curry buffet. Oh, nearly, nearly. So she's going for like an RP sound here, but she goes buffet, uh, and that's more Birmingham or Yorkshire. It's not common in, in RP. What we would say is a turkey curry buffet. It should be the same sound for curry and buffet. C -b -c -b curry buffet, curry buffet. So if you're aiming for an RP standard English sound, make sure your uh is uh and not uh. Make sure you don't say bus, curry. Make sure it's curry bus. Great, I was wearing a carpet. Yeah, this is something that I hear she does a lot actually. So sometimes with Renee Zellweger, she doesn't complete the diphthong. So we've got a word like I. I. Diphthong is two vowel sounds shifting to one another. I. I. Um, but she doesn't always complete them. So she went, I was wearing. Perfect. I was wearing. I was wearing. But I'm missing that second part of the diphthong. I was wearing. Great. I was wearing a carpet. Yeah, and also carpet, it, carpet, pit, pit. It's these vowels, they're so tricky, but she does a great job with it most of the time. It's just sometimes they're not perfect, but overall, very good job. Moving on. Okay, I could not do this video and not listen to one of the most iconic British accents in a movie, and it is the Cockney accent done by Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins. Everyone says it's the worst accent, the worst London accent ever done on film. So I'm going to listen to it and I'm going to tell you why it's so bad. Ladies and gents, comical poem, suitable for the occasion, extemporized and thought up before your very eyes. Okay, first of all, I don't know what he's saying. Okay, I think that's the biggest criticism is people don't understand him. And the, I think the weirdest thing he does so far is this Sean Connery thing, extemporized, like he's decided to do f z and s. He's doing a sh sound like Sean Connery, the name of Bond, James Bond. So he says extemporized, but instead of going extemporized with really sharp, crisp sounds, he goes extemporized, rised, which confuses everything. So don't do that sound. That sound only exists really in Sean Connery. Um, it's not an accent thing. It's a, it's a idiosyncratic thing. It's not um, something you will hear in England. All right, here we go. Here we go. He hasn't got the vowel sound there. It needs to be, here we go, go. But he sort of goes go rather than go. So the vowels are all off. Can I just say, I still think Dick Van Dyke is one of the finest performers in the world. I think he's incredible, but this is a bad accent. <laughs> Hello, Andrew. Hello. Yeah, he keeps doing his O's not wide enough. It should be hello, hello for Cockney. It's ow, but he's going hello, which is like Santa Claus. Ah, uh, Mrs. Corey, a story for you. Your daughters were shorter than you. He did an American R. Your daughters, your daughters. He did an American R. Should be your daughters, your daughters. Same vowel sound. Your daughters. No R's in most regions in England. West Country, yes. Cornwall, we might get some R's. But in most regions of England, we don't pronounce the R. Okay, I want to look at an accent that isn't 
London based. I want to look somewhere different. So we're going to look to Yorkshire actually. So Anne Hathaway is American, but she did a movie called One Day. If you haven't seen this movie and you don't want to see spoilers, there might be spoilers in this, I'm not sure. So you can skip this one if you want. Emma. Morley. Morley. Nice to meet you. Uh, Emma, you'll join us for tea, yes? Oh, uh, no, no thanks. I, uh, I should leave you to it. You're gonna go? Yeah, well, um, pleasure to meet you, and, well, nice. have a nice life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so so far I'm not sure what, what accent it is yet. Just give me a second, I'm a bit confused. I need your phone number. My number? <clears throat> right, my number, my number. So straight away she's gone, um, number. So do you remember I said, before with Renee Zellweger, she said buh because she said buffet. This is more of a Yorkshire sound like Anne Hathaway's just done. My number, number. If you want an RP, London Standard English accent, you want to say number, a uh, number. But as we go more north in this country, it starts to become number. So that's nice. Uh, my parents' number? My parents' number, that was okay. Dad's got a fax machine at work. Just, just the phone number is fine. Yeah, that's not, that's not good. <laughs> Dad's got a fax machine at work. Yeah, it went very posh then. Very posh. Dad's got a fax machine at work. Just fax. It's, it's nearly there. It's not as wide as I would like. She kind of goes, Dad's got a fax machine at work. It's kind of very, like, dead. If I said dead and fax, that would be extremely heightened posh. Dad's got a fax machine at work. She doesn't go that far, but she also doesn't go as wide as I would want for Yorkshire. Dad's got a fax machine at work. Dad's got a fax machine. Ah, ah, ah. It's that ah sound that I think Americans and English learners are scared of doing. Dad's got a fax machine at work. Look, I've got to go. I know. So that sounded very American because she went, I know, I know. I know, it's very American, like, I know, oh, 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 a smiley, oh. However, if she's from Yorkshire, which I would assume she is because she says number, it should be, I know, I know, no, no. In Yorkshire, they stretch the vowels a lot more. So instead of no, it's no, I know, I know, I know. So that's quite, that was quite American. I think my issue with that accent is she kind of, doesn't know where to put it. She sometimes sounds Yorkshire, then sometimes goes very posh. It, it, it ha doesn't have a home. I don't know where it sits, but it's fine. It's okay. You know, I know she's trying to be English in it, but not perfect. Okay, now let's look at an Australian actor and Australian has a few more similarities with a lot of English accents. So this should be easier for them. And this is Russell Crowe in Robin Hood. And I believe this is his attempt at like a Nottingham accent. Speak if you must. <laughs> I didn't. Sorry, I've just got a bit hot under the. <laughs> I didn't realise Oscar Isaac was in this clip. Hmm. <clears throat> Give me a second. <clears throat> I re oh, I really like Oscar Isaac. You're trying to build for the future. Right, okay, here we go. If you're trying to build for the future. Again, it's like a mix. This sounds a bit like it's kind of Liverpool-y. Let me have a little listen. You're trying to build for the future. Build, so, okay, that build with the dark L really thick. It's a really strong dark L. If you're trying to build, kind of sounds Manchester. Right, I'm from Manchester, so I say like my dark L's quite a bit well. You know, Manchester has that really strong dark L. Then it says future, like, it's the intonation, it goes future. That goes Liverpool at the end. Cause a lot of Liverpool, they are future, like trying to build for the future. It's the, it's a Liverpool intonation. So, so far, no Nottingham. The laws of this land enslave people to its king. A king who demands loyalty yeah, and then again, he's afraid of that ah. A king who demands, like, he doesn't really know what to do with the demands, but it needs to be ah. Demands, demands. Don't be afraid of that sound. But offers nothing in return. I have marched from France to Palestine. I have marched, marched. That sounds like Manchester, Liverpool. I've marched. Yeah, we've marched. You know, from Liverpool, we've marched, marched. 
very Liverpool, a lot of it Liverpool influences. He sounds a bit like a beetle. And I know. I know. He, he, again, he's not committing to a vowel sound there. He doesn't know what he wants to do. I think for Nottingham, probably just, I know, no, no, oh, oh. I think a good safe bet for an O oh sound is just go, oh, oh. Don't try and go, no, unless you want to do a Yorkshire accent. Don't try to do no, unless you want to have a Cockney accent. In the middle, standard English, RP, no but he's not committing to a sound. Yeah, he's just not certain of the vowels he's making. So my big tip to you would be, if you decide you want to do a standard English, RP, London, Sheffield, whatever kind of accent you want to have, just make sure you stick to something that's consistent. Okay, let's look at an accent that I think is brilliant. And it's interesting because she's, um, taking the accent from a real person. So this is Meryl Streep in The Iron Lady. Nonsense. Errant nonsense. Okay, so I just spoke about tapping R's and I just said, we don't do it. And she does it. She goes, errant nonsense. Errant, errant. In older, very posh people, people from Eton and Oxford, and they're very, very old, they do still tap their R's but it's dying out. It would be very odd if I met a 25 year old who said apparently and errant and barren. That would be very weird. So if you're a young person and you're learning an accent and you want to sound like you have an English accent, don't tap your R's unless you want to sound like you're from Liverpool or Scotland, somewhere like that. But with RP, Cockney, Standard English, don't tap your R's. But this works for Margaret Thatcher because she was an older lady who was very, very posh. Something, anything. If you pay nothing, you care nothing. What do you care where you throw your rubbish? Your council estate. Rubbish, perfect, uh, uh, rubbish. Not rubbish, that's London. Not rubbish, that's up north. Rubbish, perfect for where she is. She's got an RP, heightened RP accent. Rubbish. Uh, uh, uh. Your problem? Somebody else's problem. It's, it's the government's problem. She's amazing. Wow. Your problem? Your. That's a sound that is really hard. Your. We're not going your. We're not doing your. It's a long sound. Your. It's like a train coming out of your mouth. Your. Tor. For. War. Or. That's a sound that a lot of my students struggle with, but she does it perfectly. Some of you is that you haven't got the courage for th Again, courage. She does the r because she's old and posh. Courage, but don't you do it. This fight. No, you haven't had to fight hard for anything. It's all been given to you. And you feel guilty about it. Well, may I say, on behalf- The way she does the link, may I, may I, that's a really hard link. I think a lot of people who are not native to the accent will want to split that up and go, may I, may I? but she goes, may I? Her linking is beautiful, wonderful. So I wouldn't recommend using her as your basis for an accent because it's very specific. She's very old. Um, but if you want to use someone to copy their accent, use a native person, obviously, because then that'll be the safest bet. Um, but she is absolutely amazing at, at doing that accent. Fabulous. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you would like an online English lesson with me or my partner Bez, the link for that is down below. Also down below is all the Lingoda information. Get your money back. Get your money off with my code, Smashing English. Go, 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 go. And if you want to follow us on Instagram, you can do so there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta!